Hey, good morning, everybody. We are in Kennewick, Washington, and we are going to the Rock Show, the Lakeside Gem and Mineral Show, which we went to once before, and it was a good show. Lots of great cases. Uh, well, I got some, I got a couple of zeolites last time. It was good. So I have high hopes for this show. I think it'll be good. Hopefully we'll run into some friendly faces here, some people we know, and even, you know, it's a beautiful day, but we're gonna be inside. Well, the, the show is quite busy. We're gonna start with the cases here. Those are some big pieces. Yeah, I, I wonder what the method was for polishing that. Yeah, like that where they just got the like band polish and what kept the druzy. I guess so, like I guess you'd use what like a you use like a Fordham or those are more flat. Yeah. impressive pieces. Yeah. We've never, you know, lately I've been noticing when we go to the shows, there's so many like bird huh. carvings, like ag agate bird there. <laughs> impressive pieces. Yeah. I like that one. I, I can't remember what, what are those trees called. I don't know. It starts with an F. I'll put it here on the screen if I can if I can think of it. We've seen uh, seen a lot of those mm -hmm. lately. Yeah. I don't know if it's like a, a trend back. that's coming back. Yeah, maybe. It is. It was something that was like kind of. I think it was popular in the mid '70s. Yeah, we've seen it in Rock and Gem. That's kind of cool. Yeah. All uh, Oregon yeah. coast, so. Got some amygdaloidal basalt. That's probably got some zeolites in it. I mean, that's from. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Hey, apicular jaspers. Cool. Hmm. Huh. All about blue. Something I've been paying attention to lately. So what we got, uh, looks like right there is... Uh, Wyoming? Yeah, so we got uh, Wyoming there. That looks like a little Natchez. Yeah, very round. Yeah. A lot of Wyoming. I'm not exactly sure what that sphere is. It doesn't say light makes things blue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some impressive obsidian. Yeah. <laughs> Peanut. I like that. Okay, so there's such a huge variety of obsidian out there. It's nice to see labels. Obviously, the rainbow is beautiful. So, uh, Wheeler High School. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, what is that stuff called? Um, I can't remember. I can't remember. Hmm. Oh, hey. <laughs> Hi. Brought your shows quite a bit. Oh, thank you. Jared, Sarah. Hi. What was your name? Nate. Nate, nice to meet you. Cool case. Yeah, I like uh, so we got a map with some pins on it, and that's corresponding to what's on display here, which I like that. It's very nice. Yeah. The little lily pad huh, right there. I'm, I'm, uh, it's neat that they have like there's a piece of mica schist. <laughs> Here. Yeah, we got Stones some of Washington and Oregon. Uh, obs uh, the serpentine from Wild Turkey Mine. We gotta get some sunstones. Huh. 
that's kind of cool though to see yeah. um, variety. The, yeah, the variety. Somebody's a Malachite fan. Very green. And obviously, so all the cases have a number, and I think you have our tickets, right? So we're gonna find which one we like the best, and we're voting. Some jewelry. So far, everything has been really well labeled. Yeah, well, that's nice. I would. We gotta get out there. Yeah, like, those are some really big limb casts. Impressive. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't want to say that a club should require something, but I do think labeling. If they were just like, you want to put it in a case, you have to put it on a, you have to put a label on. I think that's reasonable. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely like a creative use yeah. for smaller funny. stones. Uh -huh. <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> Halloween tree. Sure. It's kind of fun. Four. Colorful. That's a that that piece right there. That's amazing. Yeah. There must be someone in the club teaching how to make the trees because they're really yeah they're they're prevalent more prevalent here than most shows. It's the trendy thing in the Lakeside Club. All right, if you guys don't know who Mike is, I just threw the link in here. Mike's been 3D printing all of this stuff, which is impressive. I'm interested in that right there. So he's making a holder for eight inch laps. And that's what that is. Kind of like the little dish rack back there. We got 3D printed saws. We got 3D printed uh, vertical laps. I like his little dop holders. That's kind of a cool use for that. Yeah. Some of Mike's facets. Variety of Brazilian agates. That one back there in the way back yeah. looks really good. Uh -huh. I like that one. You don't see a lot of pink. Like that, yeah. that one right there. That one's very nice. That one with the little right angle on the back is a good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're all really, they're all really yes. good. And we've got some polka dot, which we need to go there because now you can go back to the polka dot, which is uh, at the Canyon Rim bed, Thunder Egg bed, impressive material. There's some good blue coming out. You can kind of see in that piece right back there in the corner, we got a little bit of like a bluish hue to a little blue gray. Those are some very large <laughs> CBAs. Yeah, and they're all all tumbled. Yeah, so they were bigger. Yeah, I like the one with the eyes. Yeah. That one's pretty good. I mean, well, they're all really good. Obviously, any of the ones that have eyes and banding. Yeah. That's a very that's a very good case. I don't know. That's a strong contender for a, a winner a winner case here. Ooh, look at Smith. You want fossils? Yeah. The Montana little picture, oh, yeah. the dendrites in there, that's kind of neat how they did that. Yeah, it's like a little bird. Yeah. Uh, looks like a kid's case. Yes. Yeah, junior exhibit. Ten. It says he's ten and his favorite fruit is cheeseburgers. <laughs> That's pretty good. Cool. Still good. Yeah, you know, like yeah. Yeah. labels. Perfectly good junior case. Oh, yes. I, yeah, I think we're hitting down. all the yeah. junior cases. 
That's nice that they like have like kind of emphasis on doing some junior cases. Yeah. Oh, Montana egg down oh there. Oh my gosh, I love this one. This is my favorite. Wow. Pokemon <laughs> were rocks. Amber. But it's just their opinions. It's not. <laughs> It's that, not that, official. That's a pretty good concept for yeah, a case, though. It is. Wow, buddy. I, I think their opinions seem pretty good. Yeah? I don't I, disagree. I, I don't... Uh, I mean, I'm mostly looking at the you, color here. Sarah knows more about Pokemon than me. I mean, that is a purple one, and Amethyst is purple. It's a, a creative case. A little case. bit of like a Minecraft vibe from this. Yeah. Great labels. Rocks and Legos. That's cool. They built the little pedestals out of Legos that's created. Oh, this one. I feel like they must have been like, you have to label stuff, because that's yes. a lot of labels. Like they, that, I'm surprised to see like junior cases with labels. Yeah. So that makes me think that they were like, let's label everything, which is good. That's smart. That I like sense. that. I mean, without labels, you're like, all right, they glued some rocks down, but you're mm -hmm. like, oh, petrified wood. Well, we have to pick a winner. Let's walk I back through know. real quick, pick okay. a winner. So I think we have a winner here for both of us. Case number 29. That is quite, quite good. Makes me wonder what they didn't, uh, they didn't tumble. So one thing that pretty much you can find at almost every rock show is auctions. Look at that. So, 100 bucks on that one. That is an impressive piece of petrified wood. We're at 55 for that one. Look at the size of that. Wait a second, we have salt and pepper shakers, $15? Buy it now for 25. Do they function? Yeah. Wait, is it, we need, if they're both basalt, you could be like basalt and pepper. I know, it's too bad they missed out. Why would they use marble? That's a pretty good deal on those big pieces. Yeah. Mike. Hey. How are you? Pretty good. Oh, I'm Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, um, we're at it again this year. Yeah. Are you doing your demonstrations? Yeah. I've uh, impressed with your lap holder. Yeah, did you see it over there? I did. Yeah, I'm trying to look at people. You know, in the, in the clubs all over the country, if they bought a big size printer, the 400 by 400, they could make a lot of stuff for their club members. Are, save a lot of money. Are, are you selling lap holders? Yes, I do. How much? The lap holder like this one? Uh, probably about 20. Do you have any here? No. no. Well, it's a, it's a, I love that as an idea. That's, a, that's great. Well, you know, your club over there is Spokane. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the, the fellow over there. He's, ja James French. Yeah, uh, James already had, and I've got, right now, I've got another set like this with the canister that some gal over there ordered, and they've never had a uh, way to get it over there. Well, uh, you know, uh, we should have connected sooner. I could have driven it up. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I've got another set with the uh, actual canister. You know, she keeps hers in the canister. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's an it's an excellent idea. But, but yeah, uh, there's so many components out there for three for, for all these people in the hobbies. Trying to get into the hobby and 3D printing is another avenue. 
Uh, like I said, uh, Carly, elf of the Hermes Club, just turned around and got from me a Cobra Max 400 by 400 printer. She's planning on printing the 3D uh, printed cavern, the big cavern there. And this way, she's got orders from her club members for those because you go out and try to buy a machine nowadays and they want an arm and a leg. It's, it's painful. And you can print one of those for less than $100. Yeah. And that includes speed control, motor, and all of that. And maybe even the lap. Well, if you haven't seen the interview that I did over at Mike's shop, I'm going to put a link in here. You should definitely go check it out. We talk all about 3D printing yeah. in that. And the one that she be 3D printing is a version of that, which is the Pro Diamond Demon. Yeah. Vertical cabbing machine. We saw your display case. Yeah. Yeah. It's a smart design. Quick and easy. And in fact, we got a member of our club right now that's from the Mammoth Day. And uh, we printed her up one. She says she loves it. It works great for her. That's fabulous. And I just gave out the plans to two other members. One over there, one here, to print their own. Me, you know, I'm, I'm slowly being convinced that maybe I need to get a 3D printer at some point. <laughs> it, 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 it just makes it easy. When you're through printing your machines, you can start printing things from around the home and in the house. <laughs> print your dinner bowls or whatever, your snack bowls. Hooks to put your pictures up on the wall, whatever. But the 3D printer around the home has quite a bit of use. Even in your car. Yeah. No matter where. But I'm finding it very, very handy for use in the lapidary field because now with the price of machinery and even the used machinery, you can't afford it. Now it gives the everyday rock count a chance to join in the club and get going. It gives them a machine that they can use the mm -hmm. camera. Well, I'm right there with you. I agree. It was good. It was good seeing you. I'll let you get back to your demonstrations for these people. Okay. <laughs> it was good seeing you too. He was talking about the Diamond Demon. Yeah. Right here. They're, they're a fabulous machine. It's a, it's a finished ones here. My dad did. Okay. This is River Rock from Fur Road. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can see on this one the sharp edge there. Well, I've actually grinded that on both sides, creating a bevel to get rid of that sharpness. That's what I say. Yeah. For the hand. I love this demonstrating that. <laughs> Old wheels will cut you right to the bone. So, have you used a uh, horizontal flat lap? In your opinion, what do you think? Like the vertical versus the horizontal? The horizontal, there's no flex disc up there is on these. Mm -hmm. You could bend that a little bit. You put pressure in, it gives a little. Mm -hmm. Horizontal flat laps don't have that. They're completely oh, yeah. flat. Yeah. The technique is the same. I've never used one like that. I have like the a high-tech diamond like all He's you need. 3D but. printed a little machine. I saw. It's actually faster than this thing. Really? Because I've been keeping my eyes open for, for one of these, but... These are hard to get they are, in. Every time I've seen them come up, they're like absolutely a wrap. I have like 350 on this one. This one is around. I have not seen them on eBay since. Oh, they're going to be the jumpsuit? Like you said, there's a lot of things. He's been 3D printing. I have an Ender 3 myself. I can print the small stuff. You can look at, you can look at him, <coughs> see how many sections there are in him. Yeah. He was printed on the big screen. Uh -huh. They glued together. Hmm. Well, thank you for uh, demonstrating here. I, I like the I like the form factor of it a lot. So maybe I'll maybe I'll find my own on Craigslist someday. We'd be demonstrating on the cabbing machine while he'd be fast. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, thank you very much. Hope you enjoy the show.
some good pieces of few land, eh? Yeah. What's up, man? How are you? Man, how you doing? I'm good. Yeah, I'm here buying stuff right now, so I'm just kind of waiting for it to get wrapped up. But this is the best booth here, I think. I like it a lot. All the variety of minerals and all the cool, you know, they have really great prices. Yeah, already on acrylics. <laughs> yes, already on acrylics. Okay, so everything is wrapped up pretty good, but it's all closed in the spot. Don't put anything heavy on the spot. Good day. That's a good piece of still bite. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I have another one that has that on what? the front. Make sure to video here too. Yeah. Doing any trips lately? Uh, we just went to Utah. Oh, did you? Uh, did you get the selenite down there? We did not do that. Oh, okay. I guess like down there at the jetty, like I, they've been like shutting down some areas. Uh, I don't, I'm not exactly sure of the drama, if you will, of what's happening down there, but it is a thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, it, was, it was good seeing you. Yeah, you too. Enjoy the show. Yeah. The show. I'll see your videos. Let's see. That's a very impressive piece of still light. That's a nice one. All right, so I gotta get something. I kind of like still light calcite. That one could be really good. Very nice. I have all, a... All I, the calcite for yeah, us. Yeah. He's got a UV light. I, I should have brought my UV light. <laughs> so you can see all the calcite on that. Oh. Uh-huh. Very nice. Happy with that. Do you have any um, things that are more thumbnail size specimens? I see you got some over there, but specifically zeolites. Not in the zeolites. Typically, everybody wants big zeolites. Yeah. So. You know, I, I, my, as my collection grows, uh, I keep looking for smaller and smaller <laughs> primary specimens. Yeah, the campsites, they want you to buy like a hundred of them. It would take forever to push out a hundred of them. Well, I'm definitely going to get that. I'm going to walk around the other side here and, and look. Not to blind the customer, but blind myself. Do that. No, I don't. Well, they're all good. That's going to be impressive under the microscope. We'll have to take that one back and uh, uh, check that out. So I'm going to get that, and then I also have that still bite over. Yeah. Are you done, or are you still looking? Um, I think I'm done. I think I'm good. Thank you. Perfect. It's a good one. You didn't have the giant piece already. Can I do it? Hmm. That's kind of crazy looking. Yeah. You know, one thing that's interesting about the spheres is I couldn't make that for $17. Yeah, I couldn't make that for $17 if I wanted to. And these are actually, uh, have quite the good polish. Sometimes when we've seen spheres at shows, they uh, have almost like a matte, uh, matte finish on them. Like uh, they're, 
these are these are go 100 percent yeah like these are all really good it's almost like some of it you could just like cut the material up and har like har harvest them for that yeah because some of the prices are really good yeah i mean like 50 bucks for a sphere that size like that's not not bad if you're into the world of spheres, which I'm not really into the world of spheres, <laughs> but. Yeah. Yeah, $42. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's kind of more the finish you would typically see. I know yeah. that's like the house, but. At least that side's really highly polished. Yeah. <laughs> what? Gob. I have... Hmm. That is interesting. I don't think I've ever seen whatever these are. <laughs> it's like a little ball, but... Do you know any? Do, uh, do you know anything about these? Is it like? Do they cut well? Like, is there? They're, they're more unlike an oddity. Okay. Um, I believe they're just a, they're just a creamy white in the middle. They don't have a lot of. Um, they're definitely in the middle. They're, they're definitely just, interesting looking. Like the. And I think that's the allure. Okay. <laughs> is that they're just an odd shape. Well, we saw everything there was to see at the show. I got a couple of interesting specimens. Um, it was very busy in there. Yeah. There's a lot of people coming and going. I think in a little bit, it's because there's like sports stuff happening over there. Um, but, no, you don't want to follow me? That's fine. Um, some good cases. Yeah, there's some good cases. They did good demonstrations. Yeah, it was cool to talk to Mike. Like, yeah, you know, it was, it was overall I'm very happy with it. So, yeah. um, I have some things to look at under the microscope back in the shop, and we'll do that next. I'm happy with those. That still bite with the calcite. Uh, that stuff's gonna look great uh, photographed. I wonder about the calcite under the three different spectrums. We'll do that. We're back from the Lakeside Gem and Mineral Show. I got two specimens while we were there. Uh, before we look at these right here, which I got, I got this little piece of clinoclase. I might be mispronouncing that. That's okay though. Uh, we'll be looking at these up close here in a minute. And I got this nice piece of still bite with calcite crystals on it. And uh, it looks amazing under the UV light. They kind of showed us that there, but um, it looks really, really good um, under shortwave. I don't think he had a shortwave light. So the show was excellent. Um, you know, I thought the, a lot of the cases were really, really good. And cases were really good. Yes, yeah, the, the cases were good. It was cool to see Mike. It was, I liked, I'm tempted to try his 3D printed machines. I'm tempted. Uh, what you're looking at right there, if you want to zoom in on, or I center know. up, I don't know yeah, center up on one of those little, uh, uh, like, almost like dendrites. I initially thought this was dirt on that. Refocus, right there. I initially thought it was dirt on that. <laughs> and, uh, and it, looks, it looks really good. So um, that's the calcite on still bite. Um, but before we look at the specimens, what do you think of the, the, the cases? Yeah, I thought the cases were really good. I really liked that they were labeled. It was cool. I liked the kids' cases. 
they had a little more thought to them than other shows adult cases. Yes. And that's nice when somebody puts in some effort. Yeah, I think the the cases are a fantastic way for somebody that's just kind of like at the beginning stages of learning about rocks and minerals to go see some really cool stuff that you're probably, I mean, you're not going to be getting or finding in like maybe, you know, your first year or whatever of, of collecting. And it can definitely be like a thing that kind of really inspires people to go out and find cool stuff. Um, there was a lot of like kind of jewelry sellers at the show, um, which isn't really our thing. Yeah. Um, but uh, I got a couple, I got these couple of nice specimens. So the, the still bite and calcite is from India, which Indian zeolites are not really a thing that I'm super into as opposed to my Northwest zeolites. But when I saw that specific one with uh, how the calcite crystals are spread on it, I knew right away it was going to look amazing under the UV light. And sure enough, here's a photo of what that looks like, and it does look incredible. All of those little calcite crystals are glowing bright, bright blue, and uh, it's it's a good keeper keeper piece. You want to put the little uh, the the little perky under there? <clears throat> so this right here, uh, it it doesn't really show up on this, but we have little blue crystals. Everything that kind of looks a little black there is actually a very dark, dark blue. And uh, you, it's a combination of little like flat crystals stacked up like a book. And then there's also some like little terminations in there. Too fine of a detail for the digital, but they look fantastic under the optical. I did take a photo here that you can see what this stuff kind of looks like uh, under some more magnification. Um, some of them are so fine that I had to zoom in so much that there is some chromatic aberration in the photo, but that's just the way the way it works sometimes. Um, but uh, I'm very happy about these two pieces. Pretty much that. You haven't seen the stuff under UV. Let's, uh, let me turn off the lights and stuff here. You gotta see this thing. It's impressive. That's the perfect amount for this. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can really see. Yeah, it's kind of uh, the still bite doesn't really react at all, and the calcite reacts a great deal. So, But it's just like a kind of bluish-white mm -hmm. And there's, there's also a little bit of phosphorescence mm -hmm. to it, which yeah. is cool. Well, Lakeside Gem and Mineral Club show, I would go back if um, the, the cases were worth it. And if you're into some specimens, well... You can find some specimens there. I have to obviously limit what I'm getting because there's a space issue. There's a space issue. <laughs> so I try to get cool pieces that I can take nice photos of. Well, any, any other thoughts on it? No. Well, hey, um, if you're out there uh, and you're into 3D printing, there is Mike Zinsky's contact info here. Um, he'd be an excellent person to get a hold of if you're interested in that. I know he's shared some of his plans. I'm not saying he's going to share them with you, but uh, I think uh, there's definitely a number of really cool ideas for 3D printed products that are kind of involved in the lapidary world. So go check that stuff out. And uh, with that said, we'll leave this one here. Thanks for coming by, everybody, and I'll catch you in the next video.